This is a soft and fuzzy blanket and I'm going to rip it apart. I consider myself a connoisseur of soft and fuzzy things, a collector if you will. So when it comes time for people to get me a gift, they know it's a slam dunk to just get me a soft and fuzzy blanket. I'm rapidly running out of space in my tiny apartment to store all of my soft and fuzzy blankets. I was using this blanket the other day. I noticed in this corner, you can see it's starting to come apart and it got me thinking this blanket's just made of yarn. Why couldn't I just disassemble it and make something else with it? Once an idea like that comes into your brain, it takes hold pretty hardcore and it doesn't leave. So since that fateful day, I have been obsessed with frogging this blanket and making something else. I don't know if you've seen the cute little mushroom skirts that have been going around on TikTok, but I have. And let me tell you, I need one in my life. Who wants to just make a skirt when you could make an entire mushroom ensemble? And that's what we're gonna do. I wanna be a mushroom fairy. Here's the plan. Step one, frog this blanket. Step two, make a mushroom skirt. Step three, accessorize. Cause you know we can't just stop at a skirt. I want to do a hat to go with this look and maybe some other things. I do feel like this is a pretty large time commitment already. We will play it by ear as far as how much else I want to add to this outfit later. For the skirt, I saw a tutorial from, I don't remember her name, but I'll link it up here. She was showing people how to make a mushroom skirt. Basically her tutorial said to just make, you know, a ribbed waistband as wide as you need it. And then to put, I think it was like either three or four treble crochets is what she did in every stitch on the waistband and then just keep on going with your crocheting until it's as long as you want. Add some circles on the outside and now you got a mushroom skirt. Pretty solid plan. I feel pretty confident about that part. Step three is to accessorize and for the accessories I definitely want to do a hat. I bought the twisted bleeding tooth hat pattern from the Twisted Hatter and we all know the Twisted Hatter and her amazing and beautiful creations. I put off making this hat for quite a while due to the time commitment and also yarn required because I didn't really have any velvet yarn and I was kind of waiting for it to go on sale. Who needs to wait for a sale when we've got a blanket? I'm pretty sure we'll have enough yarn to do everything that we want to do. I don't have a yardage estimation on the skirt, but I do know how much yardage it will take to make the Twisted Bleeding Tooth hat. I looked up some usage charts online. I'm thinking based on the gauge of this blanket and the size, we should be able to get about a thousand yards out of it. I feel like that'll be more than enough, but we shall see. And if it's not, I don't know, we'll figure it out. We'll cross that bridge when we come to it. For the details on our mushrooms, I'm gonna go with this Karen Pound of Love and kind of an antique white. I have a couple of these that have been sitting in my stash for a while, so this will be a good opportunity to stash bust and use those up. The Twisted Bleeding Tooth hat pattern does call for double stranding your yarn with a velvet as well as a worsted weight yarn. For that, I have this Red Heart Super Saver and an ombre gray. I know this one's not necessarily an ombre, but the gray here has like a bluish purpley undertone and I couldn't seem to find a yarn that was a solid color that had the right tones and the right shades. They were all just slightly off on their color. It's not just one solid color of gray. This one's a bit dappled. So I'm hoping that the variation in this ombre yarn will help to match our original velvet yarn a little bit better. So that's the basic plan. Frog the blanket, make a skirt, make a hat, maybe make some more things. I don't know, we'll see. Don't overcommit me. I think it would be cute to have a matching top or maybe like some leg warmers. Okay, now I just feel like I'm stalling rather than getting to the tedious work of frogging this blanket. I just know this is gonna take hours and then it's probably gonna take me even longer than I think it's going to take me. Yeah, I'm stalling. I'm stalling, let's go. We're gonna go, I'm gonna go. I'm just, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go. I have been unraveling this blanket for what feels like a freaking eternity. <laughs> In reality, it's probably been like five or six hours that I've been doing this. I've been kind of working on it when I had downtime just watching shows, uh, when I just didn't feel like crocheting or wanted to unwind. So it has taken me even longer than I thought. However, we are on the final leg of this journey. 
I only have this much left on the blanket to unravel. So we're getting close, probably another hour or so before it'll be done. I think in total it would probably be like seven or eight hours altogether. Initially, I thought that the hardest part would be that I did not have a yarn winder. However, what I've found is that probably wouldn't have been helping me out anyway because it is double stranded and it's not double stranded with yarn. It's double stranded with a normal sewing thread. So I will show you what I've been doing. You can get a better idea of the process in case it's something that you decide to do on your own in the future. This was such a tedious process. The only way you can make this work successfully was to frog a little bit and then wind up the sewing thread portion, then frog a little more and wind up a sewing thread portion. And I would do this until I'd done maybe a row or two maximum, and then you can wind up the velvet thread separately. If you don't stop every so often and wind up that sewing thread portion, it will tangle into everything and cause a massive knot and a massive headache for you trying to untangle all of this. I don't have any footage of that and you should be thankful because it made me want to die inside. It's almost over though. As you can see, it's been quite the ordeal, but we've only got like, you know, six, seven inches left on this guy before I'm going to be done with it. So we're so close to the end. My goal right now for today is to finish this unraveling and then hopefully actually get started on the project itself. I know it's crazy crochet something, right? So I'll check back in with you guys later and show you my progress. And hopefully by later tonight, I will be actually working on the mushroom skirt. Honestly, it felt so good to have the end of this frogging experience in sight because it took forever. And I mean, I knew it would take a long time, but it took even longer than I thought. And I am so glad that it's over and we can just start crocheting. Oh my gosh, it's finally done. And my back is happy that this is over. <laughs> I got two ginormous balls of yarn here. It's probably pretty safe to say that it's like a thousand yards. I felt like that was my kind of generic guesstimate as to how much I was gonna get out of it. And I feel like that's pretty close. So. I think I'll be good to have enough yarn for both of the things I was hoping to make. I am going to go have a snack and start crocheting. Update time. So here is my progress so far. We'll just put it over my face. <laughs> it's about like, just like a little bit shy of halfway as long as I'm gonna need it to be. I'll be folding it in half, kind of like this, and then that'll just basically be the waistband. I probably got a couple more hours left on the waistband and then I'll be moving on to the skirt portion. I'm thinking that what I'll do is seam the two long edges together and then put this part with the opening into the front center for a drawstring. That's the basic plan right now but it's gonna be a couple more hours before we get there. I'm gonna try to work on this some today and see how far I can get. And then I will check back in with you guys once I've got the waistband basically done and ready to go. I figured I'd pop in for an update because the longer that I sit here working on this skirt, the more I am convinced that the ombre yarn is not going to look the way that I envisioned it's going to look for this hat. Initially, I had thought that the dappled coloration on the velvet yarn would work better with this ombre. I don't know if it's really gonna work out the way that I'm thinking, and I don't want to get halfway through the hat, hate my result, wanna redo it, and just end up frogging it and doing it over again because the yarn didn't turn out the way I wanted. What I'm thinking the solution to this is gonna be is I'm going to take one of my little scrappy balls of this yarn, go to Joanne tomorrow, and then I'm going to see if I can find a yarn that is a better color match than this Red Heart Super Saver. So let's cross some fingers and hope, hope, hope that Joanne has a better color match in stock than anything I have in my stash. And I will probably update you at Joanne's. All right, I'm at Joanne and I'm about to head inside see if they have any yarn. I'll take you with me. Let's take a look.
I think this is the best match. What is the point in doing errands if you don't end up getting yourself a little treat? I got a little baby Frosty and some fries and some other food from Wendy's, but I'm gonna eat the fries first because fries are my one true love. I wanna show you everything I got at Goodwill, but I am hungry and I need the sugar. <laughs> so I'm gonna eat some food and then I'll come back and show you everything I got. Dip in my fries and my Frosty. Behold my yarn haul in all its glory. I also got these two books. And I managed to pick up four awesome movies, which technically count as five if you count the fact that Uncle Buck and Great Outdoors are on the same DVD. And check this out, it's the Publishers Clearinghouse Prize Patrol van, but it's a bank with its original box. It's so funny! Both of these yarns are wool. This one is a New Zealand wool, and then this guy here says that it is just a new wool under materials. This guy here is really pretty. It's super soft, but it, I think it's like a roving style yarn because it's not really well plied and it's really fuzzy and sticking to itself a lot. But I got three skeins of this. It is a wool acrylic blend. I also picked up this guy right here, which is really pretty and soft. And this is a wool mohair and polyamide, polyamide? It's acrylic. That's some form of acrylic, right? That's a plastic. Anyway, it's wool and mohair and the color is just super pretty. It's kind of like a tweedy. I just really love this. 99 cents for this. 99 cents. This guy right here and this one are both hand dyed wool. And this one is only like 130 yards, but that's almost 400 yards there. And then this one here is a name brand with a tag. It's got a darn good yarn which is a fancy twist yarn, according to this, made from recycled silk. And it's soft and really pretty and vibrant colors. Not a whole lot of it, but maybe I can find something fun to do. And then I've got some fur yarn, which I believe I already have some of this in my stash. And then just some pink blanket yarn. It says velvet on the tag, but this is not velvet. This is just normal uh, Bernat blanket yarn. Maybe it's really old and they used to call it velvet or something. Um, I wouldn't know if that's the case. Somebody can drop a comment down below and let me know if that is the case. I got all of this beautiful yarn here for only $18 at Goodwill today, which is freaking crazy. I figured it's probably about time that I updated you as to what's been going on with the project. The yarn that I got at Joanne is a good color match and I was able to start working on the hat. It's not really hatting in its entirety right now because it's only halfway through, but otherwise, as you can see, it is starting to take shape and grow larger. I had to use a little mushroom stitch marker. It felt too fitting. Plus, I just made these recently and I am pretty excited about them. Overall, I am super pleased with how the hat is working up so far. I am excited about it. Like the more I work on it, the more excited I actually get about the hat because I can see it starting to take shape and then I'm starting to get excited just talking about it. <laughs> let's contain ourselves, let's contain ourselves. We have so much more crocheting to do until we get to the finished hat. I don't know how much longer it's going to take I know everybody crochets at a different pace. I have spent probably about six or seven, seven, I'd say closer to seven hours on the hat so far. And I am just now getting to that inner side of the hat. I'd imagine it's gonna take me at least 14 or 15 hours to do the hat. So we will see. I'm not the best at keeping track of how much time I spend on my projects. ADHD y'all, it's a real deal thing. I don't have an app that I really like to use. Uh, one of my friends, she uses the row counter and keeps it open the whole time she's crocheting, it starts and stops the timer, but man, I cannot pay attention for very long. Forget to start and stop timers, forget to open it. I'll do real good for a while and totally drop off the face of the planet with it for a few hours. And then of course your results are skewed because you didn't time yourself the entire time. One of those things only really works for you if you consistently Consistently use it every single time you crochet. I, I can't do that. Inner chaos demon. My internal chaos demon will just not let me consistently use an app like that the entire time I'm crocheting. So, you know, 
For better or worse, this is what we have. What I try to do is keep track of what time I started doing something, time I stopped. And it may not be the most accurate of determinations of time because I probably stopped what I was doing and looked at my phone here or there, but you know. It's a guesstimate. When people are talking about how long projects take, I think we're really only wanting to get like a ballpark estimate of how much we can expect to spend on it. So that way we can gauge whether or not that is an investment in time we are willing to make. Everyone who crochets knows that crochet takes freaking time, dude. It is not fast. Even if you're a fast crocheter, projects take freaking time to make and you can just only go so quickly. It takes hours to make sweaters. It takes hours to make clothing. It just does. And I think that's why all of us are curious when we see an elaborate project. We want to know how long it took because we want to see how long it would take us to do something that comprehensive. At least that's my two cents. <laughs> Moving on to the other element of the project that I should probably be updating you on. It's my skirt. It's right here. I think you can see it. So the skirt's also coming along really nicely. It looks like it's going to be pretty um, ruffly and floofy, and I am excited about that. Here, I'll hold it up a little better so that you can get a good look. <laughs> It's my beard! <laughs> Skirt is coming along pretty nicely and I am excited about it too. This yarn is so soft and fuzzy and it's actually really enjoyable to work with and it makes me want to make more clothing with this type of yarn. So that's where I am with the project right now. My goal tonight is to try to finish the gray portion of the hat and be able to move on to the inside and use the remaining gray velvet yarn for my skirt. I have rambled on for far too long. I'm just gonna stop talking now and get crocheting. Yeah, let's do the update like this. <laughs> I have reached the point in the pattern where I need to add wire into my hat. I'd ordered some wire online that I thought was gonna be strong enough and uh, Twisted Hatter says to use like a galvanized wire from Home Depot. This is armature wire. If it's not gonna hold up the weight, I can always go back and put in a different kind of wire. I doubled it up. We will see if that is enough to get the job done. So my worst fears about the wire have been realized. And after, you know, doing like 40 stitches and then trying to see if the wire would hold up the weight of the hat, there was just no way it was gonna do it. I knew the instant that I pulled that wire out of the Amazon package, I was like, oh man, this is not what I needed. So I am at the Home Depot to get some wire and some decent wire cutters because I don't have any wire cutters that work very well at my house. They're all pretty crappy. So we're gonna get that, then we're gonna try to finish that hat. Our mission has been a success and we have wire, we have wire cutters. I did end up getting a larger package of wire than I intended just because it was a better value and I figured this way I can make more hats because the first one wasn't gonna be very much wire. And this way I can make more. And I think I'm going to want to make more after this because I think the hat's going to turn out really awesome. But we'll, we'll hold the judgment on how many hats I'm going to make until I finish making the first hat. But now I have at least all of the materials I need and it's hot as fuck in this car, so I'm going home. It's time to add some wire. Now that I have the tools that I need, we can get to putting some wire in this hat. My freaking head hurts, but I'm gonna try to see if I can get the wire part done in the brim and get us onward to actually having a functional mushroom hat. Wish me luck. Look! Oh my gosh, I almost took myself here. Look. It may be one in the morning and I might look like a hot mess disaster, but I have something to show you. Hold on. Look! <laughs> She's a hat. She's a functional hat. She's a mushroom, baby. She's a mushroom hat. She's so pretty. <laughs> I'm so excited. <laughs> Giggling like a small child because I am just so stoked about this and it's so cool. I'm gonna stop 
freaking out for just a couple minutes to say that I'm working on some spots. So it took me about three or four hours earlier today to finally finish up this hat. And then I decided, what the hey, let's go ahead and make some spots. So I started on spots earlier as well. And I've got about four or five, sp I've got five spots. <laughs> I had to look over at my stack of spots over there. I have about five spots finished right now and uh, I'm going to keep working on more and then obviously we're going to need to go back in and stuff the spots and sew them on. I'm not really sure how many spots I'm going to make in total. I've got like I said five so far but I've made some of the larger ones. I'm going to try making a few. She has a bunch of different options for the spots in the pattern. So I'm going to make some options of spots and make a few different ones and different sizes. That way I've got like, I don't know, like 15 or 20 maybe in total for those. Also have a bunch of pearls that I ordered on Amazon. They were the ones that the Twisted Hatter recommended. I'm going to glue some of those on with some gym tack and then I think that'll be everything and then I need to finish my skirt which is oh more than halfway okay I'm gonna stop here's the skirt I've added a few inches since the last time I've shown it to you but not a whole lot I've just been working on this kind of for 30 minutes or so at the end of the night or on my lunch breaks at work I've managed to get about six or so more rounds on here I do want this skirt to be knee length if possible now the challenge is going to be finishing up the skirt and then making some spots for the skirt and sewing those on as well as the finishing stuff for the hat so while it's exciting to see a hat on my head. It is not anywhere near the finish line. We've got a lot more work to do. I will probably end up having to put this project on the back burner for a few days and work on it just when I have time because I have a commission for a friend that I need to get finished up this week. I was hoping to have this done this week, but with the commission I've got to do for my friend, I don't think it's possible. I really do want to have an entire outfit to go with this look, a crop top as well as shrug and then some leg warmers so that is a lot more crochet work for me to do it's like 1 15 in the morning now so i should probably stop rambling about crochet stuff to the camera turn all this crap off wind down and go to bed In reality what i'm probably gonna do is turn all this crap off and then go make like four more spots <laughs> i know me i know me i know that's what i'm gonna do I have finally finished the body of the skirt, but because I had no idea how far I would be able to get on the skirt with the yarn I had, I did not get to leave a round of loops to attach this ruffle to. So what you're watching is me going around about six rows up on the skirt on the inside and finding just some loops that I can attach this foundation row of single crochet to that won't peek through on the other side. That way I have somewhere to anchor the ruffle and it won't stretch the ruffle out when I add all of the double crochets. Just to give you the visual example of how long this ruffle is gonna take to make, here's where I am right now. I've been working on this for two hours at this point. It's slow goings, friends. Let's take a tour of all of the stitches that I've done so far. Bin it. <laughs> that is so much work, you guys. Oh my god. Now, here's where it gets real. <laughs> because once I have this base layer of single crochets that I'm, I gotta go in and do multiple stitches in each one of those, like I did to start the skirt. So up here, I think it was four crochet in each one of these stitches, and I'm gonna be doing the same thing down here to give it like a big ruffle. And then I gotta do rounds of that. So it's, it's gonna take me four times as long for each round of ruffle as it took me to do a round on this skirt. I feel like this is going to take a while. 
I also still need to do the spots on the skirt and I need to finish the hat. Positive side, it's really effing cute and I'm very excited about the hat and the skirt and how it's gonna look when it's all done. Negative side, it's gonna take me what feels like a flip in eternity and it's already taken me what feels like a mother flip in eternity. <laughs> I'm so bad at long-term projects, guys. ADHD, man. I make plushies, they take two effing hours. This is taking so long. I really hope people are proud of me. Tell me I'm good. Did you, did you think that was good? Tell me I'm good. Tell me it was good. Tell me I'm good. Tell me I'm good. Tell me that was good. Tell me I'm good. Tell me I'm good. The main objective for today is to finish this hat entirely, which means I need to arrange the spots and sew them on and then glue on all of the gems which didn't seem like it would take me that long, but let me tell you, it took a lot longer than I thought it would. I managed to finish the skirt last night and you can see me celebrating its floofiness there. The process of getting these gems on is quite tedious. The best way I found to make it work was for me to take a stick pin and a little bit of the gem tack and then use that to get just a dot, barely any glue onto the gem and use that to transfer it over onto the hat itself and you just have to repeat that about a million times this process took me about six hours total okay look i know it's one in the morning yet again but i have such excellent news which is i have finally finished putting spots on this hat throughout the process of making this hat each step took longer than the previous step and i gotta say that remained true all the way through putting these jewels onto the hat itself. Just when you think you're at the very end of the project, guess what? You're gonna be doing a whole lot of gluing. I believe that it took me about two hours to sew the spots onto the hat, and it has taken me another five hours to get the gems glued onto this precious, precious baby right here. You can, you can see it right here, because my apartment is small. <laughs> I don't have a whole lot of space here so we're crammed into a tiny spot and it's a little bit of a challenge trying to frame shots for my apartment it be small and this hat it do be large. <laughs> I want to show you though I'm gonna sh we're doing a reveal tomorrow let's show you the hat because holy fuck has it taken me forever. Look at her! <laughs> As you can see, she do be lord. <laughs> it's so fucking cool though. Oh my God, I'm so stoked. And the gems look really cool. While it did seem to take progressively longer and longer to complete this hat with every passing step, it also looked better and better the more I did. The gems kind of freaked me out, honestly. It's the first time I've embellished a project like this and I was really nervous about the placement. I put a couple down and it looked bad and I put a couple more and it didn't look any better. And I just said, trust the process, trust the process and kept gluing and kept gluing and putting more gems. This was a scenario where more was actually better. The more I put on, the better it honestly looked. And I am really stoked about it. These are still drying. I literally just finished these ones on the edges here. Tomorrow I'm planning on getting everything together and taking this out into the wilderness to film a cool reveal for you which I'm excited about because I've never done something like this before so I'm really excited to see what it looks like. I'm gonna stop singing and I'll see you in the reveal. Wrapping things up, oh my gosh, you guys, I couldn't be more stoked about the outcome of this project. I have never made something this large and everything's turned out so great. I am beyond pleased with every single item that I have here. I feel I have a bit of explaining to do. I did not tell you anywhere in the video 
that I was gonna go ahead and make sleeves and a top to go with. When I got to the point of planning to film the reveal, it occurred to me that if I just had the hat and the skirt, I still needed something to wear with it in all of the footage and photos. And I didn't have anything in my wardrobe that I thought would go with this outfit and do it justice the way accompanying items that I'd crocheted would. And I just had the time and fortunately, just as I was deciding whether or not to go ahead and make the entire look, two of my mutuals on Instagram and TikTok released new patterns that were perfect for this look. I considered that a sign from the crochet gods that I should just go ahead and make everything I had been dreaming of, and so I did. I ran out of time for the leg warmers to be included in the final look. However, since the reveal was filmed a few days ago, I have managed to finish the leg warmers. They were honestly a really fast project, and I got them done in like two and a half hours for both of them. I also want to make sure you know where you can find all of the designs that I am wearing today. This hat is the Twisted Bleeding Tooth Hat Pattern by the Twisted Hatter, and I highly recommend it. It is freaking awesome, and I am going to be making a lot more. The sleeves are the Puffy Buffy Sleeves by J Designs or Peasant Coco on Instagram. My crop top is by Passionate Goods, and it is the Basic Halter Top. The skirt pattern was a tutorial that I saw on TikTok and I cannot remember the girl's name. I will get it and put it on the screen here for you so that you can go and follow her. I highly recommend all of these designs. This skirt was so simple and easy to customize and it fit perfectly. I got a drawstring on it. It works fantastic. This hat is amazing. The sleeves are highly customizable. I went ahead and made them long sleeves and made them very large to balloon out and then gave myself some cuffs to go with it so that they would get that kind of balloon look. Every tutorial I have followed from Passionate Goods has been super amazing and I highly recommend all of her halter top patterns. I believe she has a hexagon cardigan one too. Please be sure to check out all of these other amazing designers and give their patterns a go. Thank you all so much for watching this video. I really hope that you've enjoyed seeing the process of me turning a blanket into this mushroom fairy look. If you did, click that like button and feel free to subscribe because I upload crochet content, including vlogs and tutorials every other Wednesday. And I love to make new crochet friends. Follow me on social media. I am Grayspace Creates on all platforms. Thanks again for watching and happy crocheting.